Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jack. Uh, I'm the lead of the product marketing uh, from QCD. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, today, I will be introducing our L04V, uh, the air assist liquid cooling solutions. So uh, we have been talking about uh, liquid cooling year, uh, for years, but we really think that the liquid cooling or a better cooling solution is needed right now. So in the chart, the X exit is the power per socket, and the Y exit is the cost that you need to put into cooling that socket. So when the TDP is below 300, you see the slope is rising at a reasonable rate, but when it hits the 350 or even 400, it goes just too, too steep. That is just not reasonable to continue going with air cooling solutions. So with that, we think, yes, we need to have something, not tomorrow, not next year, but right now. So we look at all different kind of solutions. We do some comparison with the key factors. Um, in this busy table, you can see that on the cooling type, we have liquid cooling solution, and we also compare the emerging cooling single phase with both liquid to liquid and liquid to air, and also the emerging two phase liquid cooling solution. Um, from the coolant type, uh, you can see, comparing with the tank level volume, uh, and also the cost per gallon, uh, per liter, um, we believe that liquid cooling has its superior standing point compared with the emerging cooling normally the single phase or two phase. Um, yeah, they, they all require different um, um, uh, infrastructure facility, but in terms of the performance, based on actual results, it actually can heat quite well comparing with uh, even emerging cooling two phase solutions. Now we are looking at 850 watts TDP. Of course, it depends on different TKs, but in general, we can hit like this number quite easily. Uh, the PUE, um, because it really varies, but when you compare our liquid cooling solutions, if we go with non-chiller air, we are looking at as good as 1.07 or lower PUE number. And about the warranty, I think that's the big issue. Today, I said that we need it today. But today, there's no IC vendor is able to provide the warranty for the emergent cooling. Leave alone all those PCB, power supplies, NICAR, optical transceivers, a lot of challenges, right? Infrastructure, because you go with the liquid to air, so nothing needs to be changed, just as air cooling solutions. But if we go with the emergent cooling, no matter the single phase or two phase, you need to deal with the serviceability issue. You need to have the robotic arm to hand the server up until it's dry out, then you can do the service. Leave alone a very important environmental factor is the emergent cooling for the two phase, the fluorocarbon, which is even worse, right? Before we can solve all those problems, uh, we really believe that CoPlay will be the good suggestion for our customer. And last, CapEx, because again, you don't need to change anything. So um, there's no extra capex on the data center wise, but for the emergent, you need to have the tank level re uh, reconstruction for your data center. Um, that's another uh, big investment. So now we have the direction and how we deal with the transition points, uh, periods from going from air cooling to liquid cooling. So because it's liquid to air, and this is the top view of the traditional um, uh, data center with the cold aisle and hard aisle. So the, the, the yellow columns stands for the air cooling, uh, liquid to air, uh, air cooling, traditional air cooling rack. The green column stands for the liquid to air uh, uh, solutions that we are, you know, um, we are going to do this right now. And so light blue is the liquid to liquid, liquid server rack. So because they are using the liquid to air versions of the, of the heat dissipations, you can just put them side by side during this transitional, uh, transitional period from air cooling to liquid cooling. The, the, the pain for the customer can be kept at the minimum level, right? So now we talk about why we're doing this, why we're doing this way. So let's talk about what is our products. So again, our code is L04V. Um, on the left hand side, this is the front view of the rack. Uh, this is based on 42U, a standard EIA rack. 
but it can be using as a 40A, a 40A use, 52 use, or even OCP rack. You can fit in there because this is the smallest dimensions among the all that I just mentioned. On the top, we have the TR switch. At the bottom, have one U power state for the for the uh, fans uh, behind the rack, and also we have the CDU. That's a 4U CDU at the very bottom. In the in the middle, because it's a 42U, so we keep 30 U's for all the server uh, IT gears. In the middle, this is the uh, uh, radar exchanger with all the fans. These are 90, meter, uh, 90 centimeter, uh, 48 volt DC uh, fans. They are not just powerful, but also efficient. They're running on DC. And they can be hot swappable. On the right hand side, this is the radar exchanger, uh, radar exchanger uh, door open. So you can see the radiator is inside the door. So when the, the coolant's coming from the top, going down, uh, the heat will be uh, dissipated by the fans behind it. Uh, then we look internally. Uh, I need to give a shout out to Intel uh, that you know, we work together. We based on Intel fourth generation's uh, Xeon uh, processor, uh, codenamed Sapphire Rapids, and with our 2U general purpose compute server to run all the validations and uh, to make sure that the liquid cooling can work. So on the right hand side, you can see this is the two. 2U two socket system. We have two cold plates um, to cover the CPU's um, uh, heat. And you can see then routing out from the blue cable. That, that is the, for the cold, cold coolants going in. And the red is for the hot coolants coming out. With the liquid to air, um, that is uh, ideal for um, a lot of existing air cooling environments. But some of our customers' data center, they have already got the liquid pipes built in in their data center infrastructure. So we have different SKU with the different rear doors. So you can see we can get rid of the radiator. We take out the fans. We put in the, um, the plate exchanger. And we add a, a flow control valve. Now it can become a liquid to liquid version. Most of the key ingredients are reused. The CDU are, are re reused. The rack infrastructure is reused, right? So two, two different failures for different customers. So this is how it looks like, but how it perform. And these are based on the actual measurement data that, in, that, that is performed in our lab. We know that customers may have different requirements or different goal when they're talking about the uh, liquid cooling solutions. Some of them want to have the ultimate performance out of the silicons. Some of them want to have the optimized operation cost. On the left hand side, this is based on the uh, silicons. Um, um, we are not able to talk about its spec, but on the, on, the, on the red chart, it's 68 degrees C. I can tell you that it has the very fair margins for the air cooling already. But on the blue parts, this is a this is based on liquid cooling solutions data that you can see there's an 11.8 degree C temperature gap. So we can do something like consistent turbo boost to gain more, more performance out of the CPU if you want to. On the right hand side, the red chart is um, the, the total power of 15 servers in one rack. And the power is 2,790 watts. But on the blue, um, bar, that is the combinations of the same 15 servers fans, the CDU pumps, and also the radar exchanger fans. And that's only 927.8 uh, watts. That is uh, almost 70 percent uh, 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 um, power saving compared with two different kind of cooling solutions. Right? So now customers ask, oh, yeah, this is this good. And how much I need to pay, right? So we talk about a TCO and a PoE. On the left hand side, uh, the X exit is how many years, and the Y exit is the TCO. That we know that TCO is, consists of both capex and opex. So although air cooling has a much uh, lower capex compared, to, compared with the liquid cooling solutions, but you can see the slope has a very different way. You know, so with the air cooling, it's just go much steeper. And with liquid cooling solution, it's just go much you know, better and friendlier for our costs. 
So if you have your system config, red config, and we can, based on your original electricity cost, we can calculate how many years you can actually start earning money by using the liquid cooling solutions with our, with, with our design. On the right hand side, you can see this is liquid to air PUE optimizations. The blue chart is the cooling power I just mentioned on the last page. So that's 2700 versus 900. Um, in the crimson chart, that is the IT power, so both are the same. But because we can give you a higher ambient temperature with 40 degrees C, you can get rid of the HVAC. That is the most um, power consuming part in your data center. And that can bring your PoE significantly uh, much, much lower. But that is a performance. But when we talk about the data center, we need to care about another level of the telemetry management, monitoring, all that kind of stuff. So the heart and the brains of our liquid cooling solution is actually a CDU and how it can be suitable for the modern uh, data center. I will, I, I will explain the details a, uh, in a couple of slides. So this is just how it looks like. Um, the traditional 90-inch uh, rack wide, uh, 890 millimeter in depth, that's 35 inch long. Uh, look at the front and rear view. So on the left hand side, you can see there's no pump that can survive five years of the operation in the data center at, the, at this moment. So we need to make it hot swappable. So you see, we have two pumps, hot swappable. So there's no single pump failure can jeopardize your rec levels operation. And we have a filter to make sure that the liquid quality is good as always. Of course, it can be changed. And the LCD monitor, can, you can see what's going on inside the rack. On the right hand side, um, this is a secret weapon. We are the first one to do the server grade BMC chips inside the CDU. We actually put a DCSCM in the CDU. So you can do all, so, all sort of the management with your CDU, right? So with, because we have the, C, the CDU uh, with a BMC chip, so on the top of that, we also run the open BMC code. And because we have that kind of smart management ability, you can understand each of the server's loading, its health status, its having leakage, or it's running too hot, you need to you know, give it more cooling uh, power. Then you can know how to control your coolant pump. You can know how to control your radio exchanger fans to reach the ultimate power efficiency, right? So with that, we have a lot of different management interface. Uh, we create a web UI. For this case, uh, you can have the live monitoring of the liquid cooling solution status. More, you can have each of the nodes sensor monitored. And you can see you can have the IP address. Uh, then you can know exact location of each of your server. With that, you can even control the server fan zone behind um, each of the server. But some of the customers, they say, hey, we have our management tools. Give us a rapid API. Yes, we can do that. Right? So no matter you need a complete solution with the web UI, or you can handle the management tools by yourself, we can offer those kind of options to you. But when you go into in front of the rack, you still want to know how what is happening right now. So we have LCD monitor to show everything that you need to know happening in that rack. So you can do the uh, required service. Uh, last but not least, our booth is right there, A21. And we are running a live demo about what I just uh, introduced. So please stop by and we, can, we, are, we are more than happy to um, tell you all about it. Thank you very much.